Hi, welcome to the workshop. This week we're going to continue to upgrade the suspension on Neil's Rally Mini. So far we've been attending to the front half of the car, so we've now got an increased caster angle, we've got adjustable camber, we've got some adjustable coilovers and also some slightly reinforced strut tops. So now that half is done, we need to kind of bring the rest of the vehicle, the rear, back up to scratch as well and these are all the parts we're going to be fitting. So we've got some new arms, we've got some adjustable links here as well, we're also going to be replacing some metal elastic bushes with some ferrical ones and of course again we have the adjustable coilovers. Now for the front suspension our main focus was the caster and the camber. For the rear it's the camber and also the toe. Now the first thing we need to do is get a datum of where we are now so we can see where we are when we've finished. Right, so we've now got our laser wheel alignment heads on the wheels of the vehicle, so they're now sending all that lovely information to the computer. And as our resident computer expert, Neil, you should take over. Like Benny Hill on the Italian job, I guess. Exactly, exactly that. So first of all, we need the car, or the model. Okay, then that's the actual, actual model. That's cool. So, so this first screen here is gonna tell us all the information about what the car's geometry should be. And then we've just got to get, make sure we've got the right size wheels in there as well, I guess. So, so and Neil's just going to adjust that. So now we go to the next screen, and that's going to tell us what we've actually got on the car. So we can see how kind of squiffy things are, if you like. So let's have a look at that. So we should have, for the toe of the vehicle, we're looking at basically 3.37 millimetres. And what we've actually got is minus 22.20. Yeah, that does look a bit squiffy from different angles. So, well, you did mention uh, it before, and I think, it. yeah, it's quite nice to confirm the fact that it's obviously wrong, so that means there's something else to fix. And of course, we yeah. don't know what's happened to the car in the past. There may have been a light knock or something on the suspension, maybe somebody's curbed it or whatever, could have bent something underneath. And of course, that's why we've got a bit of a strange sort of result there, but it means we have an opportunity to fix something, which is great. So now the other thing is the camber angle. That's supposed to be roughly, what, one degree and 45 minutes. And we've got, what, was that 30 minutes there and 0.48 minutes on that side. So actually the camber is also quite a long way out. Yes, it is. That's yes. kind of weird. So what would we be going for once we've got the setup sort of done? Uh, about one and a half degrees, something like that. So we're going to do a whole load of work to end up with stock. Yeah. Right. <laughs> of course, the new arms have got no play, so yeah, okay, uh, we'll be able to hold the right degrees and we, it's more adjustable. So uh, yeah. particularly with the front caster, when you turn in, that yeah. could give us more camber and then we might want more camber on the back as well. That's cool. So yes, I mean, also it does make it completely adjustable and still very controllable, which Definitely. is what it's all yeah. about. Yeah. All right, fantastic. So now we know what we have to start with. You've made a note of that, what we'll do is we'll just get the car up in the air and then take everything off and start changing everything. I guess this is our office for a while, isn't it, really? Yep. So we're going to be messing around with the suspension. It's quite nice, actually, in a way that we had to go the long way around with the front suspension, because, of course, we've already had to take out the exhaust system, which is kind of helpful. So the next thing would be to remove the heat shield so we can actually get to the job in hand, which is going to be replacing a number of these units. So we're going to have these two arms there. So we're going to replace those, aren't we? So yep. they're, they're yeah, exactly. adjustable. We've got some coilovers we're going to be doing on both sides as well. So I notice you've also got some replacement sort of arms here for the suspension. These ones look in pre pretty reasonable nick, so why are we changing those? I've noticed that somebody's replaced the bottom strut mount with a, a standard bolt and a heli coil, and it doesn't look yeah. that great. So. Okay. so just to be safe rather than sorry. Definitely, yeah. Makes it to yeah. Do that. And as part of that change, we're also then going to just change the sort of metal elastic bush that's in this little housing up here yeah. with 
a spherical one, so you've actually got a much more predictable suspension again, getting rid of that squishiness. Yeah, again, a bit more control over what the suspension's doing. Ah, fantastic. Okay, well, I guess we better crack on and start with this little chap. Hmm. Yep. So with the wheels off, we now have a much better view of what we're going to be looking at. Now we're going to be removing the coil over first of all, and then we're going to be taking off the various arms. Of course, we've got to remove the brakes just to actually get to this rear arm as well. So I'm going to start by just getting a little bit of penetrating fluid in there. So first thing I'm going to do is just take off the rear caliper and I'm kind of hoping we can get away with not disconnecting the handbrake cable or the brake pipe itself, the hydraulic side, because theoretically we should just going to like just place it somewhere else while we do all the swapping out of the various components. Actually Neil, can you give us a hand and just maybe just support the weight of this? Top bolt as well. Well, it's undoing, which is a start. <laughs> yeah, it's always good. <laughs> I think I'm kind of done with doing some welding on this. Right? I think we've I think yeah. we <laughs> moved between the, the front subframe, the roll cage, and the seat rails. So <laughs> I think this car's uh, seen enough welding for a while. Could have made one from scratch. Okay, so that should now wiggle it, just maybe just give it a bit of a jiggle just to get the yep. pads away from each other. And then, is it a bit stuck? Uh, yes, it is. Now I'm just going to try and rock the caliper from sort of one side to another, effectively either side of the disc. And the idea is I'm using the disc as a lever to try and get the pads separated enough. It's kind of... <laughs> but obviously we've got maybe a bit of an issue we might have to deal with later that this one seems to be a little bit sticky. Oh, he's getting serious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, what we're going to try and do is just try and push th this part of the caliper that way, so we can go without damaging anything at all. I'll try. I'm going to go. Is that moving? It feels like some it's getting, yeah, it could be. Keep going. It, uh, it's like the, the handbrake is actually fighting us a little bit there. But there's a little tiny lip. There's not much on the disc, but there's a little no, tiny lip on there. I think the piston's a bit sticky. Yeah. Just try a little bit longer if we can. If we can get it off, that'd be lovely. If we can't, we'll think of a plan B. Just trying to ease it rather than yes. force it. I don't really... I mean, the other thing we could do, we could potentially just grind off the little lip on the disc. That might, we might have to do that, but let's just try and a little bit more... Bit more, more easy. If I pull the sensor out of the back... It's definitely moved. It has. No, it's definitely getting better. So it's... um. I'm sorry, to avoid hitting myself in the face with this thing. Oh, definitely. That's a good thing to avoid. So by disconnecting it from the sliders, I'm hoping we'll have a chance to sort of just give us a, just a little bit more leeway. Right, so now, hopefully, if that bolt comes undone. So I'm hoping now that we've actually separated the caliper from the carrier, a bit more wiggling, we should be able to get the caliper away, leaving the pads still attached, and therefore the lip on the end of the disc shouldn't be a problem. But I think you're going to have to get the lever in again. Yep. So Got a nice little hole here I can slide perfect. it into. So gently does it. Come on. It's coming nicely. Surely. Is it coming? Yeah. Because even if we get one. <laughs> Just be, keep catching oh, the piston. Okay. That, that oh. felt good. There we yeah. are. Simple as that. Great. Right, so now we'll just take that apart. So, we'll see those are our pads, there's our caliper. What we're going to need to do now eventually is wind that back in 
and see whether perhaps there's a little edge on the piston or maybe might even have to replace this, which would be a bit of a pain, but it's better that it works than not, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Okay, fine. Well, if we hang that up somewhere up there, maybe that's a perfect place, actually. I'll give you that. Let's pop that up there. Right. So, now with the brake caliber out of the way, we'll take the disc off, and then we can start thinking about removing this damper. I might as well just pop this disc off. I think it looks like it's quite well frozen on there, so I'll just give it a tap. In fact, do you want to put some... Just put a nut on the yeah. end to... Stop it from flying across the workshop. So. Yes. I shouldn't need much. That's it. A bit more. That's pretty good. Oops. Cool. So it just gets us out of the way, doesn't it? So that's nice. So now the next thing is going to be the bottom bolt here for the damper. But what's interesting, if you can see this little helicoil thing, this sort of spring looking thing, basically. I guess in the past, somebody has actually stripped the thread on that bolt and they tried to repair it and obviously not done a great job, have they? No, it, uh, it really doesn't look pretty. This shouldn't be sticking out the end. It looks like it's just been pushed through. Well, the worry is yeah, there might not actually be anything holding that bolt in, really. Yeah, that's right. It's quite common for these because you've got a steel bolt in aluminium housing that yeah. it just strips the thread out as you take that bolt out. So, don't know the history of this car, but at some point it's obviously been... Fixed. <laughs> yeah, let's say fixed, but then that's why we're going to be changing these arms just so that you've got a good one with a good thread and then we know where we are. We might as well do both of them because then we just, as you say, we don't know the history, so it'd be nice to know exactly kind of where we're going. Yeah, I certainly don't want to be suddenly losing the suspension at some point. So. Wouldn't be ideal. All right, so I think this is going to be a bit of an impact drop, I think. There we go. We've still got some thread on the bolt. That didn't move anywhere. And now... Okay, that's off, which is good. Now, of course, so we've now, to undo the top of this strut, we've actually got just two bolts on either side at the top, and so I haven't got to go inside and disturb any trim. But actually, there isn't any anyway, is there? No. There we are. So we don't have to disturb no trim, if that makes any sense. Okay, so this is the second one. So, Neil, you've got hold of that, right? Yep. Okay, so let's just drop that out, watch the ABS sensor wire, at least. that's it. Okay, cool, got it. There we go, have one of those, sir. Thank you. Excellent stuff. Right, so next up, I think we'll just disconnect the anti-roll bar and of course the ABS sensor itself. In the ball joint there. Okay, one second. So what we need now is a little nut on the back of that. Well, actually, Neil, there are two flats on the back of this little ball joint, and I can't get my 16 mil spanner on there, so I'm going to be a bit naughty and use a pair of moles. So hopefully that should now stop it from spinning. Okay, ready. Yep. Okay, sir. More. There we go. Fantastic. So Excellent. Do you want to spin that nut back on there so we don't yeah, lose it? That's good. Idea. Keep it somewhere rather than getting lost. Now, of course, there will be some kind of electrical connector somewhere along the line here that we could have undone, but obviously we need to take our sensor from this bottom arm and put it onto the new one. So either way, we'd have to undo it. So it makes it quicker just to do that. Or not. Now, the next question is, how do we pop it out? Can we actually see it on this side? No. Nope. <laughs> Oh, I think one might need a little bit of well, penetrating fluid again in there just to see, but that's going to be a bit of a tricky one, I think. So the thing is, the aluminium of the hole, if it started to corrode, will have expanded just like steel would normally do, and that means it's going to be gripping onto the plastic part, which will be much more fragile. So it might take a little bit of gentle persuasion to get out. Right. Uh, the question is, can I get a little something? Oh, I think that's going to be quite interesting. I can't even make it... It doesn't feel it's moving at all. There's nothing there. Or maybe, there we go, it's sort of... It's thinking about it. Oh, there we go. 
How many new parts were you thinking of buying for your mini, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> I seem to have bought quite a lot already, so I'm sure the old well, extra one there or two. There we go. Oh, nice. So you can see that all this white, sort of fluffy stuff, that's the aluminium oxide as it's degrading, so that's what was holding it in. So now, our trailing arm here is actually held on to the car still by these two control arms, which we have a nut and bolt holding them onto the chassis there, and then there are three bolts holding this other joint to the car. I think, I don't know, I feel like we could go either way, but I think perhaps as these are slightly easier to get to, maybe we undo that front knuckle and then maybe you just have to take some of the weight while I faff about at this end. Yeah, sure. That looks like probably another 16, do we think? Let's give it a go. Okay. Sounds good. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly out. <laughs> right, so now, it's all a bit rusty up here. Just to get rid of some of that surface rust on the bolt head. And then last but not least, Oh, a bit more. <laughs> right, so now that is levitating of sorts. Now you've got the weight. I'm worried about the wires before you pull on that too much. Oh, yeah, hang on, just, just disconnect them from oh, there. They're actually attached. So a little metal clip, well spotted. So now, actually, yeah, we're hooked on. There we go. Oh. There. So we're hooked on the drop link. So now it's just these two nuts and bolts on here. Right, so these are pre quite tricky because it's actually recessed right inside. So, again, this is probably assembled as a whole unit, isn't it, on a bench? Yeah, yeah, that's By right. a robot. With, <laughs> without the fuel tank in the way. Well, indeed, yeah. Okay, let's give it a go. Oh, no. Hang on, I've got spinning going it's definitely on. got looser. Yes, it has, I think. No. Okay. Excellent. Come on. Come on. Oh, no, we've made oh, it. That's amazing. That's a relief. <laughs> so, next. So these bolts are sort of buried deep inside this rear subframe. Okay. Okay, so now, with any luck, where magnetic fingers really come into their own. <laughs> I thought that was just your personality, Ed. <laughs> right, so can just help me avoid these wires. As yep. I put it. That sounds quite good. And then we'll just mix all that stuff. Well done. Nice. Brilliant. Okay, we're apart. Right, well, thank you very much for watching. And thank you for all your questions and comments. Please do keep them coming. Now, I've got a question here from a Patreon, Alex Ferris. Now, they're loving the episodes, but can't believe how rusty the Range Rover is. And do I have a plan to de-rust the underneath of the Rangey? And if so, what am I going to use? The ingenious method of strapping the fuel tank to a concrete mixer obviously wouldn't work. Well, actually, you say that, but you can get some really, really big cement mixers. But I think you're right. The chassis is going to need another way of doing things. And in fact, actually, when you talk about the underside of the Range Rover, obviously the bodywork is probably in a far worse state than the chassis itself. So I think the first thing we're going to have to do is actually take the body off from the chassis and then treat that separately. It's going to need loads of welding, loads of cutting and grinding, all kinds of work, just to get it back to sort of one piece, probably to get through the MOT altogether. Now, when it comes to the chassis, well, that's a bit more of a robust piece. So obviously it's going to handle things like shop blasting, soda blasting, could even be chemically dipped, but there's a lot of little places where those chemicals could hide afterwards so perhaps the best thing to do would be some co2 or sort of dry ice blasting now that stuff is amazing because obviously effectively you have just got frozen co2 and it's obviously quite hard you fire it out of a gun blast away all your paint and your rust and then of course it evaporates completely leaving no residue so the military use it an awful lot but it is quite expensive equipment so of course it's actually quite hard to get hold of so if you happen to have a company or know of somebody who does that service then please do let me know because we want to be quite a fun experiment to play with on our Range Rover. Now I've got another question here from Aaron from New Zealand. Now they've just inherited their grandfather's 1967 
Austin Gypsy G4. Now that's a great little off-road. It looks a bit like an old Land Rover Defender, but slightly more curvy, which is rather lovely. And obviously quite deep into the restoration already because they've already stripped the engine and body from the chassis, but that's when they notice that the wiring might need a bit of attention. So far there's lots of crispy bits, there's bits where damage has been repaired and there's joins or connectors in places you wouldn't normally expect them. And really the question is, what's the best way to approach the repair? Do you strip the wiring room completely away from the vehicle and then try to replace it either with a brand new one or perhaps a universal one or just try and work on it while it's still on the car. Well, now the thing is, they made about 20,000 of these vehicles back in the day, so I don't know how many are left. Either way, it's still a very lovely little classic. So I think if you can, try and keep it as original as possible because that way you're going to maintain the value in the future. Also, when you're doing the repairs, it might be easier to actually start by repairing the bits and pieces you can see that are wrong while it's still attached to the car and then to make it really, really tidy, you could then, as long as you label it properly, take it all out of the vehicle and then pop it onto a pegboard or whatever, maybe go over with loom tape or whatever was appropriate for that year of vehicle. And then that way you're going to have a really lovely job. But also next time when you come to work on it, if the wires match the ones in the wiring diagram or the manual, then you're going to understand what you did because no doubt you will forget, as I always do. <laughs> well, good luck with that project. Anyway, it sounds like a lot of fun. I have another question here from Timothy Boots. Who makes your magnetic puck style lights you use as spot work lights? Well, that's a very good question. In fact, many moons ago, we did a little collaboration with Philips and we got them to do their MDLS lights in my grease junky colors. Now they're quite handy. Got a little hook on the back so you can hook them onto pipes and cables and things underneath the car, but also they're magnetic on their bases. And once you've stuck them in place, you can actually then use one of the two levels of light and you can kind of spin it all around and actually get it just where you need it. And they come in a set of three in their own little charger, which is very handy. So you can use them all day and then pop them in to charge overnight. Now, the interesting thing is we tend to use them absolutely everywhere, even to make sure that we get just the right amount of light to get the right kind of shot in the studio. But you end up leaving them on the cars and then go off on a test drive. They're still attached, come back, and they're still there lighting the thing I've just repaired. So they are quite handy and quite robust. And this one was even crushed by the ramp and it still works, which is quite amazing. Now, they are quite rare, they're a limited edition, but they are available at greasejunkie.com. But because they are limited edition, they also have an alternative for you. So Milwaukee do much the same sort of thing. You can see it's got various levels of light there. It comes with a little carabiner there and a magnetic base as well. And of course, it's all nice and adjustable, but this one's even rechargeable using a USB port, so very handy. So I guess the next question is, what am I doing having my coffee in this beautiful 1966 Californian gold Mustang coupe? Well, this is a job for another day. And talking about jobs that I should be getting on with, time to get back to the dirty stuff. So here we go. So this is our arm now on the bench. So what we're going to be replacing is we're replacing these control arms with these adjustable control arms, which is kind of cool. And we're going to replace this metal elastic bush with this spherical bearing. So this is very much the same sort of bearing that's on the end of these. So it just gives you a load of, of actual movement, where, but it's sort of rigidly controlled. So it basically moves around the very center of this, whereas the metal elastic bush is a bit more squishy and whatever. So again, it's all about trying to get that kind of control, isn't it, basically? That's right, yeah. We've, with this K&D kit, we've got the adjustability as well as the controllability. Nice. Um, and again, as you saw when it was on the car, it was bouncing a bit on the rubber with the arm, yeah. whereas now it's going to be completely going through the, the shock absorbing system. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an improvement all round, I think. That's cool. Okay, well, the first thing I think, let's just take this off, because I think this is going to be the hardest bit. So yes. More <laughs> pressing. So I guess, shall we give that a go? Yep. I'm going to have to hold this down quite rigidly. I think because of the because of the rubber, it's obviously going to vibrate a lot. So here we go. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we've taken a little bit of the thread. Where this one's obviously the issue. So we have to clean up before we put it back in. You can see. Okay, so literally we were just literally wrenching metal from metal to get that. Which oh, is what must have happened, happened here. here, so, yeah. Whew, that's quite loud. <laughs> so the next thing is we need to try and push this old bush out yep. and replace it with one of those. Now, this has got a top hat, so we need to make sure we get it in the right way. Okay, that's a good point. Do we know which way that needs to be? Yes. <laughs> that way, so it's going to go to the outside, or the top hat goes to the... Outside. outside, and you've got the cone here to fit on the arm. Brilliant. Perfect, okay. Let's get to the press. Okay, so let's 
pop this, I guess what that will probably do. So we'll just have, and let's have a think about this. We want to push it probably back out the way the other one, opposite way the other one's going to go in. Yeah. A little bit of space. That's better. Actually, yeah, I'll just see if that's going to be about right. So give that a go and then give that a go. Try and get it central. So I think, hopefully, what we'll be able to do now is just much the same as we were doing with the front, we're just going to push out this metal elastic bush. And I'm slightly worried it might be slightly harder work because this is the, these two bits of pressed steel, if you like. They sort of grab either side, and that means there's a little bit in the middle which can actually corrode, and it has. So we're going to be pushing through a whole load of rust. So that should be interesting. But it's going, I think. Oh, we're just oh, crushing no, the rubber maybe, at the moment. Yeah, actually, back up a little bit because we've just off center slightly. Do we need to cut that rubber off? First? I think we might have to, you know. Well, we don't need this bush ever again, so that, I think that's a good idea. Right, so what we're going to try and do now is just cut off these two bits of rubber either side because they're sort of squishy, but then this is the actual metal as so well, so what we want to push on. So I'm just going to cut those off to make sure we've actually got that material revealed, and hopefully then pushing the metal will work a lot more effectively. So I'm just going to just slice this around. There we go. So that should now make a much better contact when we pop that back into place. Okay, let's go again. Okay, it's just sort of taking the strain. That's okay, good. Putting some pressure on there. It's thinking about it. Oh, that's good. I say that, I have a feeling <laughs> that it might just collapse, but. No, hang on. I think, just go a little bit more, but I'm worried that the... No, okay, what it's doing... So it's, I think it's basically trying to compress the two halves together, so yeah. then they're just basically becoming a break. Because you can so see, basically, there's a whole load of corrosion just inside here. So that's part of the problem. But then also, I mean, it hasn't, I don't think it's actually moved at all. We could try going the other way, but I think we might have the same problem. What I might need to try and do is wedge something underneath here, so we're basically pushing this through this half first. Now what we could do is support just one half to make sure that actually when we push down there that this is sort of taking the strain, but then of course that's also going to push that one further away. Or we could push out the centre and if you've got a reciprocating saw then we could potentially cut the yeah. outside here. Why not? So long as it's not hardened. Well, we'll give that a go. Fair enough, let's get violent with it, fantastic. In fact, what we'll do is we'll push that centre out first. Yep. Okay. Some more rubber ripping. Here we go. Nope. Uh, you can hear the tearing noise. It's probably going to go ping at the bottom. Hopefully. Any second. Are we at the max of the piston, perhaps? Yeah, maybe. It's possible. All right, so I have to go up a bit more then. Quite nice that the old bushes have come in very useful. Yes. Very handy. A bit more tearing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. A bit more. A bit more. That's it, I think. Still not quite let go, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. going to be quite slow yeah. to fit on the piston. It is. Okay, back up. Well, now it's stuck on the piston, so let us try and put it under a bit of pressure. Okay. So if you bring that down again, so that's it. It's pretty much. <coughs> oh, a little bit of working, and it's still nearly there. There we go. Right, well back up again. It's unlike this car to fight us again, isn't it? <laughs> Yes. So the centre is now removed, which is great. So now we're going to try and do is go through here with a saw and actually cut that. And then once you cut that, and then it would make that sort of diameter smaller, which means it should just force out quite nicely. So better find some kind of reciprocating cutting machine. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope this works. Got a proper 
sporty old carbide blade on this. Thank you. So that might be the way forward is I'm just going to cut out a little, another little section. Yep. I reckon that might be there. If we just tap it a little bit more, I think we should be good. So now I'm just going to try and tap out this little segment I've made. It might not go, but it might certainly distort enough to relieve the pressure. Oh, look at that. That's a bit of rubber, at least. So now I reckon... Having relieved both sides, now we put it back on the press, it really should go. Because we've made our kind of really nice strong circle into a C, which is obviously much weaker, I'm hoping now I'll just pop through. I think I just saw some movement. Oh, that sounded better. It certainly moved. But it's still crushing, isn't it? I think yeah. it's still, we still have to try and find a way then. So what we're going to need to do is try and support the material between these two jaws, if you like, to stop them from actually moving and then hopefully that will mean they'll stay parallel and hopefully we can then push this bush through. It's looking quite tricky. Well, I think these two pieces of metal are probably going to do a reasonable actually job, actually. got it in. Yeah, so let's try that again now with a bit more support. Doesn't sound good, does it? There we go. There we go. A little more. That's got it. Nice. Fantastic. So now let's yes release the pressure. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> quite a relief in more ways than one. <laughs> wow. So you can see, I mean, it's almost as if it's designed like this, so that because there's this gap, that it basically kind of bites. So if it obviously was to move one way or the other when the suspension is moving, you obviously don't want that. And so in a weird way, when they become unparalleled, they're actually locking that little bush one direction or the other. And now it's in many pieces. You can throw that away comfortably and put in the new one after a bit of cleaning up, I think. Right, so it's now time to fit our spherical bearing. This is obviously going to give Neil all the control he's looking for. And if I just squish this round so you can see it start rotating you can see it is basically a ball with a hole in it and that's sitting inside a housing and so when it rotates it's going to rotate around the little center which is dead in the center there and it's not going to squish around it's not going to move it's just going to mean that suspension is just moving nice and freely but held very precisely in the correct position so let's pop this little chap into position cool now do you want to wedge in just to keep our Bits of metal parallel, and we're doing our magic fix for that. Oh, yes. So it's got a nice little relieved edge, that's it. Now, the trick would be trying to get this to go in straight. We'll see how we do. It's got a bit of a nose on the uh, housing for this bearing, so it should help it guide. Ease in, yeah, in. nearly straight. Now, unlike the bush we had to do on the front, of course, because this is concentric, obviously the centre is dead in the centre of the bush, and that means it doesn't matter which way around it goes, we haven't got to worry about that. That's right, yeah. That's good, I think. Oh, nearly there. A couple of mil to go. That's it. Oh, that's better. Lovely. Good job. Well, that really is great. We've now got our spherical bearing in position. And although it was a real faff to do this, we're now at that point where everything else we do is going to be putting things back onto the car. So obviously attaching onto this is going to be those new aluminium suspension arms. Attached to those are going to be our new adjustable control arms. And of course, finally, we're going to have our shock absorber kits going onto this as well. And once the back end is adjustable, it's going to match the front and then Neil can finally get that rally set up he's been looking for. And then we can go for a test drive. But all of that is a job for another day.